Um, Sandra Green, come on, Big 12. You know you're going to miss Texas at Oklahoma. Jamie Pollard disagrees. That went viral last week. And um, I don't I don't know. I, I, I think that both of them move on. They enjoy their new neighborhood and then and who they have to deal with. And I think the Big 12 is ready to move on. Will I keep up with them? Hell yes. Well, because I, I have all my life, and I will, but we, I think, and we will. I think, it, like, I think there will be some things that you you miss about you know the rivalries and whatnot. I mean, you know, heck, um, you know, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State lost their biggest one. You know, like that's there's there's no, um, you know, question about that. Like their big premier game that they get to talk about is over after this year, and in Bedlam. So there are things that they're gonna miss, but I don't think that administratively the way that things have worked uh, for quite some time. I don't think that most of the people are going to miss each other. I think it's that that's on both sides. I think that that is to the point of where everybody is probably where they need to be. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's unfortunate that rivalries and things have to die, but, um, you know, we, we, you can't really stand in the, in the way of change when it's coming. Mike Bean said, this is a great divorce. Yeah, I think it's I think it's fine. Yeah, I think that's a good way to put it because I don't think anybody is lamenting it now that they're like everybody has a plan. Considering where they were, Craig, in July of twenty one, everybody, where everybody is now, they know their future, they know when it all begins, they know how many years left to play in a fourteen team division. Everyone knows how much they're gonna get or get paid or have to pay. And it does seem like it's now amicable. If they move forward, doesn't mean people aren't going to want to beat each other. They should, but it does seem like it's going to be a little bit more relaxed than it, it was, you know, over the last couple of years. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's been firmly established at this point that everybody's fine with the direction. Everybody's good. I mean, there's not really any reason to to sling mud on the, on the way out here. I think that everybody will embrace this final year, make it the best they possibly can. I mean, there's some unfinished business in this calendar. Uh, is part of the calendar first this spring semester before we, you know, officially get into the final countdown uh, beginning in August. But, yeah, I mean, like their moves, like I said yesterday, it's understandable and anybody else in the same position would do the exact same thing they are. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I don't blame them whatsoever uh, outside of just maybe the way it was potentially going to be handled. But for the 1,000th time, we don't know how they were going to handle it. It got broke, the story, before they ever had an opportunity to, to say anything officially. So were they going to screw over the Big 12? That's the question we'll never know. Were they going to drag it out until there's truly only 18 months left and then say, oh, by the way, yeah, we're out of here? Um, you know, I don't know. But it worked out the way that it did. It allowed the Big 12 to pivot and go grab four schools that will be introduced starting next year and basically save themselves. It led to not only those additions, but to a new television contract and being able to act on that with a new commissioner. Uh, it led to a lot of change, but I think it's, it's changed for the better for both sides. I think the Big 12, with the four schools they added, um, with more of probably an equal landscape overall and not so much of a feeling that you've got a couple of programs that are just always feeling like they're a bit better than you are or higher on the, the, the totem pole than you are. I don't know how much that really like poisoned the Big 12 at all. Um, you hear, you know, the tales of like, well, Texas, blah, blah, you know, I don't know how much like that, that really, um, you know, poisoned what would have been otherwise for the Big 12. Um, because, you know, at the same time, they were also, you know, there was Oklahoma year after year after year getting the Big 12 into the college football playoff or Heisman Trophy winners. I mean, they brought a lot of attention, a lot of winning, and they are massive brands. And so they want to go spread their wings, but the Big 12 is going to spread their wings in a different direction. And, yeah, I think both are, are content with, with where they're going. We haven't changed how we feel about this really over the last couple of years. It's just now we know the ending from Kim Coulter. He said, okay, Smokey and Paxton, Paxton, UT, and also Craig and Paul, you can get mad at me again, but – I could give two you-know-whats about Oklahoma and Texas and hope they both lose every game in the SEC. Being a fan is being able to dislike other schools. Uh, that's and, fine, yeah. And, and that's fine. And, and Sandra Green uh, also said she likes all the schools in the Big 12 from Texas other than Tech. Well, that would be TCU and Baylor. And Houston. Yeah, and so Houston starting, he, of course, yeah, this uh, upcoming season. Yeah, he, I um, don't know. You can't uh, – like, that's – I guess people can do what they want, but I – I think you got to have some rules, right? You can't like two rivals. I mean, what happens when they play each other? You know. Yeah, I mean that's that's to uh, 
to the individual, I suppose, to have their their own set of rules on on how they do that. Maybe it's a coin flip, uh, or maybe I it's I, I don't know how that how that works. But I mean, I don't blame anybody for feeling however they want to feel about it. If you want to, you know, remain upset that the conference had to turn this direction because Oklahoma and Texas decided to to make a move uh, for the betterment of themselves, I understand that. If you feel like they were going to leave everybody else out to dry and maybe damage their futures, had Brent Zwerneman not broken that story when he did. I totally understand that. If you're somebody that wants to say, hey, I, I never really liked you, but I respected you. Good luck on your journey. And, you know, good luck to, to us as we move forward in a different direction. I, I respect and understand that. And uh, if you could care less, I respect that too. I mean, everybody's got their own opinion on it. I'm just at the point now where it's gone on, you know, where we've talked about this for well over a year now at this point. And I think a lot of the you know, the feelings of bad blood and all that. I mean, at this point, they've negotiated their settlement. We know what the exit is. All the questions have, have really been answered. And so now it's just time to start the countdown clock to, to their exit. And, and I'm just looking forward to not so much like a lot of mudslinging and, and all that, but just what should be, a, like I said from the very beginning, minutes ago, a, a very wild and interesting year in the Big 12. Rusty Barry, I look forward to the new Big 12, but none of the new teams will draw the hatred and loving no. like Texas. Yeah, that's Probably so good, but not as entertaining. Oklahoma, Chris, too. I mean, yeah. I don't know that they drew as much hate as Texas got, uh, but they definitely drew the same crowds and drew big TV ratings and drew, you know, like when they came to town, that was a game that probably everywhere from Manhattan to Waco to Lubbock to wherever, like that's one of those games that you wanted to go to when those brands came to town, right? I mean, that's, that's when you had your biggest, probably most excitable crowds for the most part and definitely mostly over, over the years. Uh, so... Yeah, I think that is a loss, uh, that you won't have those games to kind of circle, uh, those those proving grounds against the big brands, so to speak. But, you know, we'll see how it works out moving forward. And, uh, you know, that will be an adjustment period for sure, not for having that, that deeply um, uh, ingrained history and, and rivalry. You don't have that with UCF, if you know, if you're most of these teams, or Cincinnati. You don't, you don't have that background. So that is going to be a change, but – Change is part of life. And so. those, those rivalries are as those new relationships begin in the Big 12, just like back in 96, you had some teams in the Big 8 who might have played each other, the Southwest Conference. That'll slowly uh, build up. 